Gemini must have communication in relationships to be comfortable. To be able to talk and chat is essential. If you are not a talker yourself, you have to at least be a listener if you want to be with Gemini. Like Virgo, it's ruled by Mercury and therefore it seeks a meeting of the minds. It's not just a preference, but a necessity in the case of Gemini because they really don't care for the emotional mire of love relationships. Conversation is a bridge that can be relied upon. Gemini likes that capacity to be there for the times when emotional intimacy vanishes and with all the air signs, that happens a lot. Gemini likes language and words, and that tends to cross over into the bedroom with lots of good dirty talk. Gemini shines in this way because they're so fluent and articulate in general. You also see Mercury expressing itself in how Gemini will read up on a sexual topic it's interested in. They can be downright studious. So if their principle is that they should please their lover, they'll be the first to do it. But you should have a life of your own if you're with Gemini. Focusing on you and you alone is unnatural to them. We're talking about the twins. Castor may be focused on you, but Pollux may be someplace else. Remember, the brothers are only in the same spot for five minutes each day. Focusing like a laser isn't within the norm with Gemini, and it makes perfect sense to them because they do the same thing in other areas of life. Multitasking is a pervasive phenomenon with the twins. Libra is the lover of lovers. They really do, deep down, want peace and harmony. They like a lover who's thoughtful and considerate, and they like to be that, too. Even a semi-conscious Libra would be horrified to find out that their partner didn't have a nice time, and to be called a selfish lover, no way. That is too much to bear. I spoke recently with a Libra who said that the one time he made love with a man, it was because it would have been socially abhorrent to say no. Given the particulars of the situation, it seemed like a fair thing to do. Libra thinks often about fairness, but the operative word is thinks. A big display of emotion and a Chernobyl-like meltdown is going to strike Libra as ugly, messy, and something to avoid. It hates when someone kicks the scales out the window. They'd rather have a wonderful conversation about love itself and keep a cool head. Why don't they care about balance when it comes to balancing emotions and thought? Because emotions are usually repressed in Libra. They're afraid of that part of themselves. Never a cross word was spoken between them is actually true if you're talking about two Libra friends. They hate to fight. If you want Libra to express emotion, you have to provide them something, an environment that is free of the possibility that their emotions will be ignored, criticized, or ridiculed. There must be no possibility of rejection. At the same time, Libra is social and likes companionship, so they like relationships. While they generally don't need vibrant and sweeping displays of love, having a partner feels right to them. They enjoy the company and they love the purely positive parts of romance, the talks over coffee, the night on the couch, the dinner by candlelight. You rarely find a Libra who is truly a loner. Of the already rational air signs, 
Aquarius is the least comfortable with emotion. I've heard more than a few people talk about their Aquarius partner not loving them enough, not being effusive enough. They want exuberance and Aquarius starts talking ideas. I always urge people to look for proof in action. Aquarius probably won't yell from the rooftop that they love you so everyone can hear, but look at the fact that they want to marry you and buy the house you want and take your kid as their own. For Aquarius, fulfilling ideals as a couple means a lot more than having a warm, fuzzy feeling flowing out of the heart. That's unreliable. If an Aquarius doesn't hang from the rafters and shout their passion through a bullhorn, don't take it personally. That's about the water bearer's intellectual approach to everything. When they do express emotion, those are likely to be sincere. But if you want it to be a carnival of romance, look around for a fire sign. And it's not as though the air signs can't express sexual warmth. Aquarius can be as horny all the time as any other sign, and they want to get it right if they're at all sophisticated in these matters. I remember an Aquarius who would hole up with me for days at a time in the apartment. He wrote down all the things I like on a legal pad, all the nooks and the buttons to push and the zones to visit. I didn't even know that was unusual at the time because I was 17 and had only been with 36 people. This is another one of the signs that you find in non-monogamy and unconventional relationships. The earth signs might say such things aren't pragmatic. Water might react on a gut level. But Aquarius can adhere to a complicated bond and unusual parameters and not be the least confused by them. They can be non-monogamous and still be loyal. One has nothing to do with the other. It's natural for Aquarius to seek a way to be connected and yet be free. Thank you for watching Secrets from an Astrologer's Desk, Air Between the Sheets. I'm Joy, more videos to come. And do me a favor, like and subscribe, suggest video topics, and keep watching. Next is all the ways you can get in touch for a birth chart reading and full astrological services.